Hi there, everybody. I am so honored to be here today. Welcome to Boundaries with Coach Megan. I am so glad that you're tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce um, my fabulous guest today. But before I do that, if you are um, struggling with boundaries in your life and distractions that are robbing of you, robbing you of your peace, please go to my website, megandevito.com or helpwithboundaries.com. And you can book a free session right there on my website. And I'd be happy to come alongside you kind of get into what boundaries need to be built, what distractions need to be starved. So you're living in peace. So enough about that. I can't wait to introduce my friend, my friend and um, colleague, uh, Kate. Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you more. Yes. I, you know, we, um, I just, we have a, uh, we have a work kind of new work history together, mm -hmm. which has just mm -hmm. been such a blessing, but what you do, um, with women is just an incredible gift that, um, I can't wait for you to share about. And the other thing is that I always say in our mess, God was never confused. And you have a really, really hard messy series, uh, season of your life that you're so vulnerable and so honest about. So if mm -hmm. you can, can you kind of just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then let's get into the messy season and how God wasn't confused in all of that. Yeah, for sure. I'm Kate and I am, I've been married to my husband for 16 years now. We have two boys. They are right now 10 and 12. So we are in a busy, <laughs> that's a messy season of its own yep. um, that I'll look back on later. And right now we're in the thick of that, pre those preteen years. And um, we live in Texas. We've lived in a few different places uh, because my husband and I were both collegiate athletes and then competed post-collegiately. And so moved around a little bit while we were still competing and then settled in the Northwest for a while, well, which is where we're from. And, and then um, two years ago, moved to Texas and that's where I am now. And that is where I got the idea for what I'm doing uh, now is helping other people through the messy season that, that I went through, you know, uh, it's like actually coming up on the 11th anniversary of and it's kind of like 11 years ago right now I was in this messy season so Ooh, I just I, got, I just got chills because um well I know that you're we're both raising you're raising pre-teens with grace and I'm raising teens with grace right and mm -hmm. so now 11 years ago your pre-teens were babies right mm -hmm. and so what was your life looking like um 11 years ago yeah so a uh, like uh, in the summer of 2012, we moved from Auburn, Alabama to back to the Northwest near our family. My husband was done competing and um, we got a job there and moved. Um, at that time, it was just uh, the three of us. So our, our oldest was just about one wow. when we moved, almost one. Um, and he turned one like right after we got there. And then a couple maybe a week after he turned one, I um, picked up my husband's phone and discovered that he had been messaging with um, another woman. And then over the course of like a few weeks or, you know, after that more and more trickled out about the ways he had been unfaithful in our marriage during those first five years. And, um, and so that was the, that's still my miss, my messiest, uh, season, my most painful, the most painful thing I've, I've walked through just the betrayal, the heartache, it totally blindsided me. There, there wasn't like a lot of red flags yeah. that I saw, or even can look back and think, oh, I should have, um, seen that. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't recognize them if they were there, uh, even now, but, um, that, put me into like just pretty much total heartbreak. And yes, with a one-year-old, it was complicated. Yeah. I couldn't thank you for sharing that Kate. And I, I couldn't imagine that season, what that looked like. And you said you picked up his phone, but there weren't red flags. And now when let's just backtrack, um, you, you, you and your husband were both co college athletes. When mm -hmm. did you meet? Where did you meet in college? 
Yep, we went um, in the the track team, at least where we were at school, the University of Washington, the men and the women's teams are traveling together. Uh, so same bus, same plane, not same rooms, but but, yeah. you know, we're traveling together. We're training together. Um, we didn't do the same event, so we didn't train together in that sense. But he he was a track athlete and a football player and I was just a track athlete. So he I met him towards the end of our freshman year of college and on the bus on the way home from a track meet. Um, okay. And then, so you were together since your freshman year of college? Not exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> so oh, you we knew were together. Him. Yeah, together for a little bit, broke 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 up for a little bit. But like as I said, he, you know, you can't a lot of times in college you can break up with someone and like your worlds are separate and you just go on. Like we were at a big school. Had it not been an athlete on the track team, I probably could have created more separation, but we were, our lives were still very connected and right. Okay. And so, yeah, we, we got back together. Okay. So after college, then how old were you when you got married? So I, I was a year, two years after I finished and he, he was on the football track. So he did, even though we're the same age, he did six, five years. I did, I did four. So we married a year after he was done with college and two years after I was done. Wow. And, so um, what did that look like? Was it just, I mean, oh, yeah, that ahead. was our wedding was great. Like it, it was. was huge. I mean, we were young, so we still had like all of our track friends, still even some high school friends, plus his family, his dad is one of nine. So there was 300 people at our wedding and it was beautiful. It was like on a lake in uh, outside of Seattle, um, his family, friends property, and you could see Mount Rainier in the background and there was tons of dancing. I mean, it was a really, really fun wedding. Wow. Okay. So now you have this, um, dream wedding, right. And you're marrying <laughs> your, right. And you're marrying your sweetheart. Yeah. And yeah. now, yeah. um, so how many years after your wedding, um, did you find out about him being unfaithful? So it was five years later, five years uh, essentially. Later. Yeah. About that. And, you know, I said, I picked up his phone and you asked about the red flags. Like yeah. we worked in a, in a job together where we were managing apartments. So I wasn't, I was picking up his phone because we, we worked together and like, okay, let me answer this call, you know, because the calls could come to either of us. So it wasn't like, I'm looking for something, <laughs> you wow. know? So now yeah. you, you, um, you start a family, you have a one-year-old that's stressful mm -hmm. in itself. Right. And now, yeah. and now, and also too, I mean, being, I, this is not even part of your mess, I'm sure, but it has some like being so competitive, so athletic <laughs> for so long, right. Doing like achieving and now you're a mom, right. And your life mm -hmm. completely changed in five years. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Like the dynamic of what it, how you perform is different. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And you're performing for, for, um, some a family now instead of yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, um, saw those messages, then what were the next steps? What happened? Well, I went, we, I was upstairs. I went downstairs to where he is. And I was like, what is this, <laughs> you know, and, um, just confronted him and he, you know, I mean, denied it maybe for a couple of minutes, that piece of it. And then just was like admitted to what he had been doing and messaging with her. And it hadn't gone any further than that, but it was just messaging. He was so sorry. And for him, um, he like looking like back, I wouldn't say we, you know, we couldn't have identified this in the moment, but um, he was like very relieved to be caught because he had kind of been stuck in some sin for a while and um, tried and tried to stop it. And so there was an addiction component for him um, with pornography and, and even then it escalated into, to other things. And so he was relieved but what I kept getting was like is this it I would say is this it and he would say yes this is it and then it was like two days later it would be like actually there's more okay is this it like is this it <laughs> and you I kept it's called now what I know is it's called a staggered disclosure and it's like terrible because it essentially will result in like PTSD like symptoms because you just keep thinking like the world like your world is shattering and that's the worst. And then it, the floor, the floor falls out from under you again. And so that, 
happened. I, I can't, I don't know exactly how many times. I mean, this was over the course of like two or three, probably two weeks that I was just getting more and more until I finally like, okay, that's it. And then I, I really, um, knew there was some things like some major, major infidelities that, 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 that was the end of, okay, now I have all the information. And then later we were able to like the counseling we went through, had him kind of really make sure he had gotten it all out. But now you're a Christian at this time, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're walking with the Lord, your husband, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I please forgive me if this is wrong, but I believe his dad's a pastor. Is that correct? Yes. That, yeah, he was. Yeah. He's he was a pastor. Now, but he, he's oh, yeah, been a pastor. Oh, okay. So now this is even messier. I mean, it's messy no matter what. Right. But now, yeah, yeah. now what does this look like with, um, there's, um, shame, I'm sure embarrassment hurt. Where do you turn Kate? Where did you turn, um, to get help and support at this time when your world is completely crumbled? Yeah, we turned to a lot of places. Like I think I mentioned we had just moved. So we were in the Northwest, but we had moved from Al Alabama, Auburn, Alabama. And so that was where like our community had been for the last couple of years. And we had a strong community of people, like a faith-based community there. Whereas like in where we were living uh, at the time, we were kind of in between like where our friends had been and where our where his family was. And, and so we weren't like physically, we were like 40 minutes from both. Right. So yeah. we, um, I went to Portland, which is where my family was, but they were again, like, they're not, um, they're not faith. They're, they don't, have, they're not Christians. And so they were very supportive, but they're also working. And I was li literally a mess. Like I could not take care of myself. I had a one-year-old, I'm barely functional myself let alone like how am I supposed to take care of this child who can't even remotely t take care of himself yeah. so I I called our community back in Alabama and they let me come like they welcomed me there I flew back there and essentially they just wrapped arms around me and I lived with uh, a woman there for a couple of weeks and everybody there just kind of let me grieve and they took care of him and they took care of me and I could like be with him when I needed to, when I wanted to be, and I could do what, like, essentially I could do whatever I needed to do. There was no expectation of me. There was no, I had to do nothing for myself essentially. Um, so when, and so, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. When you say they were taking care of him, they were taking care of your son, not your, your spouse. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. They were taking care of him. My son. Yes. yes. My one-year-old. Okay. Cause I'm still... like, how are they taking care of him? And what, like, what well, are they doing? Yeah. He did have a huge group of support that surrounded him too. So some people keep this a secret yeah. and they don't tell anyone. And, and we did, or he did the opposite. Both of us kind of like invited a lot of people in. Now we probably invited too many people, like too many people, but it is our story. And yeah. you know, that, like that choice about how many people you let in is very personal and so for him he was like dealing like you said with a lot of shame and part of it was like I need people to know me for who I am and this is who I am and you either accept me for this or or you don't it's kind of like again I don't know that he consciously was doing that at the time but like now looking back that's kind of what he was feeling so, so he had support where we were in the northwest I went to Alabama for a couple weeks and had support there Okay. So you had separation and God put the right people in place. I love that. I mean, I, I hate that this happened for you, but I love God's mercy and grace where he had mm -hmm. you in a community where he knew that you were going to need love and support like unconditionally mm -hmm. and not only you, but your baby and, and, and you were able to yeah. get that space that you needed. So now you have space, right. And mm -hmm. what does that look like? Because, um, you know, I hate to say, but I, I do have clients that experience this or family members that have had this happen mm -hmm. and they just don't know where to turn or how to navigate. So what happens now? There's space that is between you. Then what are the mm -hmm. next steps after kind of the, the, their space and then what? So he, like, I mean, he immediately was like repentant and trying, you know, like I want to fix the marriage. I, I never, this was never about 
the marriage, like it wasn't about not wanting to be married to you. And so it's, that's hard to believe, but when you dig into these kind of issues, it's, it's very often the case. And so he immediately was, you know, I need to pursue, how do I restore my marriage? How do I restore myself? And how do I restore my marriage? Whereas I was like, I hate you. I want you dead. Yeah. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm totally shattered. And I got to the place after the grieving period of like, okay, I need to heal myself. Like, I don't know what I want for my marriage, but I do know that I'm totally broken and I don't want to stay this way. And so that period of time can look different for different people, like how long it takes you to walk through that and whether or not your husband is pursuing his, his healing can take, I mean, some men take my husband, it was like immediately, like some men take months, you know, years, like it, it's so every story and timeline is going to look different, but, um, you talk about like God being in it. Like my, he had applied for jobs like all over the country and, and he should have gotten like with his athletic background should have gotten a coaching job. Didn't the only job we got was back in the Northwest near this couple that had helped his uncle through a difficult time in his marriage. So when he called his uncle, his uncle was like, where are you? We're in Renton. And he's like, you need to call these people. They're 40 minutes from where they met with us. Like they met with him twice a week. Then, then when, then she met with me. And then when they thought we were ready, they started meeting with both of us to help us reconcile the marriage. So Wow. You talk about like God in your mess. (laughs) That piece of the story is like God knew kind of what was, what he was doing for sure. (laughs) He had his arms wrapped around you both at Mm -hmm. the same time. And like, literally like physically picked you up and moved, (laughs) right. Moved you you to these amazing people. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Kate. So now there's, um, counseling, um, starts for the both of you. Um, Mm -hmm. hatred in your heart, obviously (laughs) first, right? Like I want you dead. Like kneecaps are coming out, right? Like we're done, right? Like hatred in your heart. Now, um, what does this look like for the forgiveness piece for you? How did you come back together as a, as a family union? Well, that took time. You know, I said, I kind of wasn't (laughs) sure what I wanted. He was like, I'm, I'm in this. I want you back. I want my family. And I, had to make the decision, like, Mm -hmm. what do you, like, is that what I want, you know, and that took time, and it took, um, you know, watching him and seeing if he was actually serious about this, and doing what he said he was going to do, and, and pursuing the healing, and it wasn't just like a short-sighted, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, you know, it wasn't, this wasn't a quick process, we had to work at it, and, and then, I mean, I said, I have a 10 year old, so you can kind of do the math. He was conceived in the midst of this. And, and even then I was like, this doesn't mean we're going to stay married. (laughs) Like I still, I'll raise these boys on my own. If I have to, I need to know that you're not going to do this again. If you do this again, I'm like, I can't, I can do this once, like, but I'm not doing this again. Yeah. Like, um, for, so that was my boundary. Mm -hmm. That was like my big boundary. This is, this can't happen again. We also put up like other ways for him to show me that he was trustworthy and other boundaries to protect me and our marriage. Um, You know, he deleted every woman's phone number from his phone immediately. He stopped all social media. Um, He did a media fast. So he was showing me and doing the things he needed to do to heal himself and then also to heal me and then to heal our marriage. And then I was working on like, okay, how do I trust you? And how do I forgive you? And that just came with time. Like it, it takes time. Like uh, I read something recently, like trust is like a bank account. And he literally like, just put it in the red. I mean, like in one, you know, it wasn't one moment, but it was like essentially one moment it's gone. And now it takes time to rebuild sure. that. Whereas like, and forgiveness, even like I I don't remember specifically like when I forgave him, but it's a constant, like, yeah. Okay, I forgave him, but then it's like the next day you're like, okay, I have to forgive you again. And so that's a work in itself, retraining your mind to like once we were in a solid place and I was really back in and I was fully committed to the marriage, I would still have to struggle with sure. like he did this. Yeah, he did. And you know what? Like I my thing was like, okay, it's nope, Satan, like you already gave us your best shot. Like we defeated you. So I'm not going down this path. That's what worked for me as far as like, 
when I would get those, those thoughts is like to remind myself, no, now it's me and my husband against Satan. And he already tried to destroy our marriage once and, and he lost. And so that was like a, a big thing for me is like to, to figure out how to stop those negative thoughts is sure. a piece of the puzzle too. So there's so many pieces of like layer upon layer of how you work through healing and different things at different times and over and over again. <laughs> so. Yeah. So good. Thank you, Kate. And I, you know, I, I always say that, um, healing is, a, is, um, a journey, not a moment. Right. And it's a journey, right. but for your husband, what I hear and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I hear is he hit his rock bottom in his addiction because his burnt, his rock bottom was that, you know, when you hit a rock bottom, you're willing to do the work, you're willing to do the change. Mm -hmm. So he was suffering in silence probably about the addiction that was happening, that he felt like he was probably ruining lives or whatever the case may yeah. be, but it was, it was, God's perfect timing almost, right? That he hit his rock bottom when you found out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of, right. Yeah. It was like, yeah. because if you, he didn't, if you found out and he wasn't ready for that change or that rock bottom, we might be mm -hmm. having a different conversation today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, he would say the same thing, like for men to do a 180, they have to hit the bottom and the bottom looks different for different people. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and that was his bottom <laughs> and he, mm -hmm. And he knew I was serious about leaving. Like he saw himself lose his family because we left. Right. And and he's like, this isn't, I can't, I don't want, this is not what I want. Like that now too, people know. And so he could get help. Whereas before he was so isolated because he wasn't, he was trying to do it on his own, mm -hmm. not with anyone else's help. And that's not how God wants us to deal with our struggles. He wants us to be bring them into the light and share them and like, let the burden be carried by trusted other people. So, and that's what I, what I love about your mission and your ministry and what is it that you do? Because, um, there's so many people in the church that are suffering because of this, because they don't want either they're going through it and they don't want, they don't know where to turn or mm -hmm. they're so full of shame that they don't want it to be out. Right. Mm -hmm. So now tell me um, and tell the audience what it, how you, did you take your pain and make it um, turn it into your purpose? What do you do now to help um, women with this? Right. Thank Yeah. I have a community and coaching for women who are experiencing the same kind of pain and heartache and betrayal that I experienced 11 years ago. And inside the community, it's a, it's a safe, confidential place for women to, you know, support each other learn with each other, help each other know like what, what's normal and get affirmed in that feeling because you can feel so isolated. You feel so isolated and so ashamed and you don't know, right. You know, what, is this okay? Is this not okay? And so it's like, we're, we're talking through things together and checking in and sharing our struggles and sharing those little steps along the way that we celebrate and in our progress and, and also learning more about the issue and how to, how to navigate through it together by reading books and having experts come in and talk to us. Um, and then I also work one-on-one -on -one with women who really feel like they're stuck and yeah. they are somewhere stuck along the way of their healing process and yeah. don't know what to do next or how to get there. But do want to, to heal and do want to move forward, but just feel like they don't really know how, don't have the tools, don't know um, exactly what the next step or what that looks like. And yeah. it, and there's, and so that's where I help people individually and the community and the coaching really go hand in hand. It's like really personalized support, but I think that both are really necessary for, for healing. Wow. To happen. Um, so now also too, in this community, are there women that are just like, I can't, I can't stay married. I, I mean, I just, I cannot fight for this anymore. Do you see that? So not currently, mm -hmm. I, I, the community was literally launched a year ago, like three days from now. Um, um so about a year by the time you see this, because, um, I, I wanted the day that I discovered the worst information wow. to, to have a new meaning. And so instead yeah. of being like, this was the day my world shattered, it mm -hmm. is now like the day I started to help 
wow. other women through wow. this. And so the date has a different meaning for me. So it's a small community. And I would say most of them are fighting for the marriage, but the focus of the community isn't, well, what's going to happen to your marriage? It's what do you have control over? Because we can't control our husbands. We can't mm. force them. And that was a lesson I had to like learn through this is like, I wanted so badly for him to do all the things that I needed him yeah. to do so that I could trust him and I could, we could reconcile our marriage because we had a one-year-old and then we, then I was pregnant and I'm like, but I, I had to surrender to God and be like, you're in control of this. Like you, you are in control. Like he, you're, you're the only one that can fix this. Yeah. Like, and he was, he has to be submitted to you. And if he doesn't love me, if he's not willing to do this, then I don't actually want this marriage. Like yeah. I want it to be better. I don't want it to be worse. I don't even want it to be the same because honestly, our marriage wasn't really great, which obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> became obvious why, but in the time I was just like, this can't be all that marriage is. I want something more than this. And so I had to surrender and say like, whatever your, your will is like, I can do what I can do. I can set boundaries. I can lay out like, this is what I need for you to trust, to trust you. But he had to do it. Yeah. And I can't control him if he doesn't do it. Yeah. That is so scary. Yeah. It's so scary. It, um, yeah. And I think women get stuck there because they're mm. like, I can't, I can't, you know, I, and it's like, yeah, we can't control someone else. Like we know that with our teens, right? Like yeah, <laughs> if right. I could control you, I wouldn't be in this, but, um, and so that, you know, there, there are times that people are like, their husbands aren't pursuing reconciliation. There's a woman in there right now who's, and, and they're, you know, she's hoping for, and praying for reconciliation, but it's not looking like that's where it's headed. But, um, we really focus on what you have control over. That's great. That's amazing because that's, what's keeping you up late at night, right? That's keeping you up all it's the, what ifs what's happening, what the, right, the future, like that's, what's keeping people sick in this situation. Mm -hmm. Wow. What an incredible, um, ministry you have Kate and to be so honest and vulnerable about your pain. Um, how do people get in touch with you if they want to check out your community? Um, I know your social media is so good. How do people find you? <laughs> Thanks. So journey beyond betrayal, mm -hmm. um, right there. So journey beyond betrayal.com on Instagram at journey beyond betrayal, Facebook slash journey beyond betrayal. So just anything journey beyond betrayal, you should be able to find me and you can connect with me that way. Great. Um, before we go, um, I just want to ask you and can share with the audience during this time, what was the scripture or what is today your favorite scripture that you would go to? Oh gosh. I was just sharing this with someone. If you give me a minute to pull sure. it up. Sorry. I kind of put um, it on the spot there, but no, no, no. I would have had it ready. I just, uh, I, I just shared this with someone that joined the community. And, um, it was the one, like I said, peace that surpasses mm -hmm. all understanding. So, yeah. but I think I was telling someone if this verse in from four Philippians four, six through eight is what God wants for healing. So, and I'll explain in a second, but it says, um, so it says, don't verse six, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Verse seven, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Verse eight, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And so verse seven was what like clung, like what, I, what, like, what became so real to me in the midst of this. But now looking at like, verse six and eight, I can see like, that's his, that's his, at its basics, his method for healing. Yeah. Ask him for what you need. Then he'll give you the peace. And mm. then you need to retrain your mind and focus on the good things that like, as you work through your healing, then it becomes your work to focus your mind on yeah. the good things. And that's his healing in its most basic form. Most basic, but yet the most powerful. So thank yeah. you. Kate, thank you to the audience for tuning in. Please get into Journey Beyond Betrayal's inbox. Kate is just so full of compassion and wisdom. And we thank you for joining in.